Hello and welcome back. If you're new, this channel focuses on the ins and outs of living abroad in the beautiful country of Poland. For today's video, I'm going to be talking about back to school. Let's get started. First off, I can't believe that this is going to be my 46th upload on YouTube. 46. You know, I started this channel and I told myself I would give myself the year. And as of now, I feel really confident and I feel a lot better in front of the camera and I feel a lot better sharing my life with you all. And so I'm hoping for 46 and I'm hoping for another 46. Now, this video today is specifically about back to school. I know in the Northern Hemisphere, everyone is starting the new school year. And for me as a teacher, this is a huge point in the year. And typically this point in the year has been very stressful for me every single year. However, out of the last four or the last three years that I've actually helped start the school that I work at, Pascal Connect, I had definitely have to say that this year, the start of the school year has been extremely relaxing, like beyond relax relaxing. And I kept thinking to myself, what ingredients or what am I doing different that I hadn't done in the previous years to have this more natural flow and relaxing start of the year. When I think about it, I have to say that for this school year, I've decided to definitely not to try to control things that I don't have control over. Now, a lot of times when private schools start up, because in Poland and globally, children don't get their full schedule at once. So children like in the USA, typically at the first day of school, you kind of get your schedule and then you're able to quickly arrange your extracurricular activities accordingly. However, here in Poland and other parts of Europe and in other parts of the world, that is not the case. Typically, children's programs don't get together until about a few days or sometimes a week into um, the school year. And sometimes even then the schedule is liable to change. So therefore, a lot of times with curricular activities, if they're not like a sporting activity or something affiliated with the school, then those activities are not scheduled into much later. And as a result, the language school that I work for and being the head teacher and one of the person that actually helps with the intake of children at the school, a lot of those entrance tests are not done into the middle of September versus at the beginning of September when kids actually start school. In the previous years, you know, as the numbers are slowly starting to grow, there's always been this stress. And the one stress I've always had in the past is, oh my God, are we gonna have enough number, I mean, enough well, hours to cover all the staff that we have at the school? Is everybody gonna have enough hours? Or, you know, are we gonna lose a lot of clients? Um, is our client retention gonna be good? And, you know, every year I have this concern and this worry, and every year, you know, when everything kind of settles, especially in like October and like towards the end of October, we end up having too many students. And a lot of times we have to send away students. And so this year I've decided not to worry about this and to allow it to flow naturally and to just let it do its thing. Now this year at my school, things have definitely changed. And I'm not sure if this is a norm at other language schools. If you work at a language school here in Poland, go ahead and let me know. But I found that we've lost a lot of teenagers, a lot of teenage clients we don't have this year. And we've also seen a great reduction in adult students. However, this has been a trend with adults that's been happening before the pandemic. And now, you know, our premier students, our prime students are actually children that are, I would say the average age of the ETs that I'm doing the most of are probably kids who are four or five year olds. So I'm seeing that 
you know, our population, at least at my particular school, at, at the particular place that I work in Poland, is having seen a trend where every year the students are getting younger and younger and younger. I absolutely love working with young children, but working with young learners is also a stress. And it's also was one of the things that made the start of the school year even more stressful for me. Because when you're working with young learners, you know, let's say if you're working with teenagers or you're working with adults, typically when you're giving them an entrance test, you can kind of you can kind of group a lot of the teenagers based on the year they are in school. Here in Poland, they don't mention years in school, they mention class, and it's the exact same thing. So if a teenager is in class, let's say class um, one in high school, then I probably, I could almost lump a lot of the other children in that group that are also in class one in high school. However, with little children, it's not the case. Their developmental abilities and skills are kind of staggered, um, specifically because a lot of children aren't getting a huge amount of English at their preschools and in their um, first years at school. So therefore their English abilities is based on maybe a lot of innate things about them. And also, you know, the interactions they have with their parents with English and maybe their interaction with English media. Yet this year, I decided to just go about it every day. Do the ETs, kind of gauge where the kids are, and not allow that factor to really stress me out. In addition to that, I have finally learned to just revel in the fact that I don't have a million things to do. A lot of times, I feel like, what am I doing? Like, why aren't I super busy? Like, okay, let's do something. And now I've discovered that if there's nothing to do, then relax, you know, watch a movie, read a book, you know, go for an additional swim, go for a walk. And so I've decided that this year, if there's nothing to stress about, go do something else, enjoy myself. And I know that the year is gonna rev up and it's, there's gonna be a thousand and one things to do. So therefore I'm taking this time to just relax and just literally ease into the school year. I also know that a lot of you, I've had a few people reach out to me who are actually applying for visas to work in Poland and other parts of the world. And I just want to tell you to relax too. I've found that a lot of the bureaucracies and a lot of the bodies that handle visas specifically in your country and around the world, they're a lot slower. And that is due to several reasons. And just be patient. It's going to happen. Like, the paperwork is gonna get filed. You're gonna get your visa. It just, you have to be flexible. Like I'm being flexible in order for that process to go through and it's gonna happen and you're gonna have a great experience. Just know that things are a little bit slower and unlike the previous years, the, the paperwork for specific things, especially visas to get abroad are slower. So don't worry, just relax. I wanna give a special shout out to my a niece and my nephews over in Tulsa, California. I know you've already been in school for over a month um, due to the fact that in the Midwest, schools generally start a lot earlier than other parts of America and, you know, Europe as a whole. And so I've seen all the cool little pictures of you know, people going back to school, all the crazy memes of parents talking about, you know, what they are gonna tolerate from their children this year and what they're not gonna to tolerate. And that is great. And I'm just so happy that I get to have another amazing school year in Poland to do a job that I absolutely love and to work with a population that brings me so much joy. I know this video is not, you know, giving some super advice. It's not sharing some crazy story. I just thought I'd come on here and just show you a different side of me, the, the side of me that's relaxed, the side of me that is just, you know, still feeling those summer vibes and um, ready to smash it out with you this year. 
There's so many cool things that we've already been working on for the channel, and I just can't wait to share those things with you. Some things I feel that are a bit more intimate and things that are really kind of digging into my life in a personal way, but hopefully not too personal. Anyhow, if you like this kind of content, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, and I definitely can't wait to see you next week.